Okay, folks, I think we're ready to get started. So, first off, thanks for coming. And um, I'm going to show you an introductory lesson for Macbeth. It's actually the very first thing that I did with my students before we talked at all about the play or before they had any kind of background knowledge on Shakespeare or any of that kind of thing. Of course, this is for a senior class, so they might have been aware of some stuff already about Shakespeare's background and some of the other plays that he's written. But as for this particular play, Macbeth, they knew virtually nothing. So uh, first thing I'll ask you to do, which I also ask my students to do, is to copy down a couple of definitions for me. And that's why you guys have that sheet of paper. The first definition is for connotation. So the basic gist of this definition would be the implied meaning of a word. The second definition is denotation. Now, you don't need to copy down number one. I just did that to show how confusing dictionaries can be sometimes. The act or process of denoting, that means absolutely nothing to <laughs> students who don't know what denotation is. But definition number two is pretty good. Meaning, a direct specific meaning as distinct from an implied or associated idea. So to distinguish between the two, what I tell students is think of the D in denotation as standing for a dictionary. So it's kind of like the dictionary definition. The actual meaning of the word is denotation. Connotation is what is implied. And then to um, illustrate the differences between denotation and connotation, I'd like to ask you guys to go ahead and copy down or draw these two shapes that are up here. We have an octagon and we have an inverted triangle. So everyone probably thinks about the connotation of these two shapes first, right? And that's the implied meaning. So what's the implied meaning of the octagon? Stop. Stop, right? But what would the actual denotation of this symbol be? Or of this shape? Eight-sided figure. Eight-sided figure would be an octagon. Exactly. Okay? And for this one, the connotation would be yield, but yet the denotation would be <coughs> triangle. And then if you go ahead and get this one line down, just for practice. So foul and fair a day I have not seen. And those words that are underlined, please go ahead and underline those, foul and fair. And try to figure out what do you think the denotation is for each of those words, and what do you think the connotation is for each word. So what would the dictionary definition of foul be, and what would the dictionary definition of fair be? And then what is their implied meaning after that? What's the denotation of that word? Okay? I wrote noxious. Noxious? Noxious. Okay, great. Anybody else? Like not acceptable? No. Not acceptable? Okay. Bad, maybe? Something like that? Okay, good. Um, what about fair? What's the denotation of fair? There's a couple of different meanings for this one, right? So for fair, Beautiful. what did you put? Good. Good. Okay, yeah, you can think of them as being opposites, right? Bad and good. Just. Which is kind of the way they flow in the line. Just. Okay, fair as being equal or, you know. Mild weather. What's that? Mild weather. Mild weather. Okay. Fair right. Mild. Okay, good. So what about for connotations? What did you come up with for the um, implied meaning of the word? Problematic? Okay, good. What else for foul? Sad. Sad? Okay, good. One way that I told students to think about it is if you think about it in terms of a bad and a good day, well, that could mean a lot of different things, right? So foul and fair day I have not seen. You could think of it in terms of weather, right? So maybe foul would imply stormy or something like that, or cloudy day. Fair might imply sunny or nice weather or something like that, okay? But the um, other class before you guys came up with the ideas that maybe foul implies evil or something like that, kind of like where you were going with that, Christine. Okay? So evil and virtuous. Okay? So denotation and connotation. There's a subtle difference between the two. All right. So with your line, what I'm going to ask you folks to do is there are just a couple of steps. First off, um, normally what I ask students to do is to copy the line down on your page. You can skip this step since this is only a, a one lesson activity. And sometimes it goes on for two periods for me. But what I'd like you to do 
is to attempt to decipher the line, put it into plain speak. And you can use your newfound skills of connotation and denotation to kind of help you figure out some of those key words if you like. But put it into plain language. What do you think the line is really saying? And it's your first experience with the line, I know. And some of you guys have lines that are shorter than others or longer. Just do your best to try to figure out what exactly is that line saying. How might someone today say it? What do you make about this character? And an inference should be based on the actual text that you see in front of you. So based on a particular part of the line, what does it lead you to infer? What does it lead you to believe about this particular character that you've got? So what inferences can you make just based on this one line that you've got? And then the final step for you to do on your own with your line is what assumptions can you make? Now, these are kind of unfounded, right? An assumption is not necessarily based on what you've got in front of you. An assumption is more like a gut feeling. So what do you believe about this character, even though you don't really know it? Do you assume this character is a man or a woman, for one? What kind of a role do you assume this character plays? What type of a character do you assume you've got based on just this line that you've got? But it doesn't have to be founded on any kind of text evidence or anything like that. What do you believe just because? This exercise is to go ahead and find other people in the room who have your same color line, okay? So go ahead and get together with those folks. You'll want to move your things to a new location. Make sure to find whoever's got your same color. And if you've got a pink card, it states the color down towards the bottom you're supposed to meet with. So it looks like we've got some yellow over here. If I'm pink, I seem like by yourself. I don't know. I didn't know that was the last. Oh, no, you're not pleased. Uh, okay, now here's what I'd like you to do. With your group, I'd like you to go ahead and go over your inferences and assumptions that you've made about your character. And also, you'll want to go ahead and share your line with your group members. Just read it nice and slow so that they have a good sense of what some of the other lines were, so that maybe they could come up with additional inferences and assumptions. Okay, so take maybe about five minutes or so, just discuss what you've got. And for those of you who are in a small group, I'll come around and give you the additional lines that students in my class would have had as well to make your discussion a little fuller. Okay, so take about five minutes. This particular area maybe he has just come into the village or he's just learning about the people who live there. Um, another assumption is that this person is trying to uncover injustice and, and he seeks truth and hopefully it will help solve some of the problems. So you didn't assume he was the guilty one? No. Can you say it again? Huh. Here's the smell of blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little hand. See, I see, when you say that, I see somebody looking out over a battlefield and there's blood. And it's like, was it worth it? It is, it's, it won for that other place, but was it worth it? I mean, that's what I see when you say that. But I see a man as well. Mm -hmm. So do you do you all think that he's talking about his own hands? I thought so because it's kind of it's not really the same language as this. In fact, it's the same scene. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these, those lines are probably right by each other because they're, the, mm -hmm. they're in the same scene. Mm -hmm. I, I assumed he was talking about his own hands. And see, I assumed he, he wasn't. Especially when it says little hand and perfumes to me that. Like he's referring to a woman? Yes. Well, he could be over the people that did that. He might not, he might have not physically used his hands, but his hand, and he might have been in charge. And, Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'm cheating because I'm kind of counting on what I thought on that person. <laughs> and what did you have? Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent. Ah. <laughs> so like, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. <laughs> um, I think it's about a girl, because usually girls look like the flowers. Mm -hmm. 
girls to be the serpent under it. Yes. <laughs> so who did you think? What was your social I assume it's girls. Okay. Who's your new girl? She's not up to too much good. <laughs> She's going to be the one that is central to the plot. Mm -hmm. This person does bad things. That's yeah, the theme so far. She's going to stir up something. All right, Meg, help us out. Come, you spirits who tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full with direst cruelty. So my inference was that she's up to no good if she, if she wants to be filled with direst cruelty. I assumed it was a woman because it says unsex me here mm -hmm. and to take away the female sex that is gentle and not able to do as much evil. And then um, bad, obviously, wants to be cruel. And then um, maybe a witch or into black magic because she's calling certain spirits. Mm -hmm. And a woman would need to be stripped of womanhood to right. be charged. Right. Mm -hmm. Versus a, a man would never say that. Right. Yeah. Right. This time. <laughs> yeah. Probably any time. What does she want to be filled with again, Meg? Uh, Diarist cruelty. Ah. She wants to be ready to be cruel. So she's not feeling guilty at all. No. Gonna have to do what she has to do. But this is mm -hmm. Act One, Scene Five. Act One. Oh. This is this is this is after this she is has act the diarist cruel. Yeah, this, this is, is bad this is preparing. Yeah. This is getting ready. Uh -huh. I've got Act One, Scene yeah. Seven. So okay. Screw your courage to the sticking place, and we'll <coughs> bail. I like Screw your courage to the sticking yeah. place. I mean, that means reach down there, find yeah. it, don't run, don't hide. I mm -hmm. think it's somebody, that's why I said that, I think it's somebody in charge who's having to uh, talk to a group saying, and I don't think he thinks they're going to be successful or he thinks it's possible they won't be, so he's saying don't run if, if we, you know, united and divided we fall. And so I think it's like the same heart speech. Stay, yeah, stay together, hang in there, and then we won't fail. So you just got to suck it up. <laughs> right. <laughs> suck it up, do what you have to do, and we're going to make it. Meg, who is she talking to when she says that? I'm guessing she's talking to her husband. Oh, is this a woman saying that? Okay. What do you think? Because she's well, see, he doesn't want to do it at the beginning. Yeah. And she's like, come on, come on. Yeah, okay, okay, honey. Then at the end, she's the one who feels guilty and is worrying about washing her hands. Well, he's like, yeah, whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just yeah. done. Do you tell me a woman said this? Is that what yeah. you yeah. Oh, these are all of, these are See, all yeah. yeah. It's been so long since I read this. I thought it was a guy. So yeah, From it, this, I thought so, I but reading the others. Right. Yeah, but I don't know, we can look at the other quotes and see what we're supposed to learn about her. Are these all about this? Gentle, my lord, so. sleek o'er your rugged looks. Be bright and jovial among your guests tonight. That's when he's, he, he, he's a little nervous about going to dinner after killing, or is it before he's going to kill? That's Act, act 3, scene 2. <sighs> Do you think he's killed yet? I don't remember. But he, you know, he has killed because he sees a ghost at dinner. Oh, yeah. um, so he has done the killing okay. already. So just relax so, and pretend to be. Here's what I'll ask you folks to do. Please go ahead and turn your paper over. Turn your paper over. Or if you just Probably need some space down towards the bottom, if you've got some still, that's fine. And go ahead and just copy down this chart for me. These are the characters that you've been investigating. You just might not know which one you've got yet. So we have Okay, now is there a group that clearly feels like you know who you've got. Okay, Christine, who do you think you've got, your group? We absolutely have the witches. Okay, good. Good, okay. So what inferences and assumptions did you make about the witches based on these lines that you've got? Well, um, I was initially way off, but when we put everything together, it was clear that we had the witches. Mm -hmm. um, the bubbling so, and the cold. Yeah. And the... So we have, um, we have, uh, lines from the witches from two different acts and so here here is uh, the first line that we're assuming from the fourth act for a charm of powerful trouble like a hell broth boil and bubble mm -hmm. so kind of traditional terms that we think of with witches here's a cauldron bubbling so what types of witches are these exactly <coughs> is this Glinda the good witch or what do we have um, well in my mind, you know, they're they're not the friendliest yeah, witches. Yeah, I don't think not they're the, the good nicest. witches. No. Okay. <laughs> Casting a spell here. So. Not the nicest. Another group that thought that they might have a woman. Okay, over here, you guys thought that you had a woman. So, what do you assume or infer about Lady Macbeth? That's your character. Um, well, 
we thought that she, um, there's one line where she said, um, come you spirits who tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Mm -hmm. She wanted to kind of get rid of the part of her that was traditionally female. Yes. All the nice parts in order to do bad things. And later on she felt guilty because on the end of the play there's a lot of folks talking about trying to get her hands clean and nothing would make her clean again and she okay. felt bad afterwards. Okay, so that has to do with, what do you think? Sorry, I missed that. Oh, uh, hands she, getting clean and all that kind of yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah. She, she wanted to be able to be cruel at first. Okay. And at the end she felt really bad about it. Wants to be cruel. Great. Initially, I was way off base. I thought yeah. it was a male character, and I thought he was talking about someone cleaning someone else's hands, and the mm -hmm. blood spill, like, spilling was someone else's fault or responsibility. But then, with the help of my group, and looking at words like perfume and little hands, we could pick up on the female um, connotations. Okay. What made you think initially, though, that this character was male? Um, because the line that I had was, here's the smell of blood still. All the perfumes of Arabia will not sweeten this little <coughs> hand. I um, sort of assumed it was someone coming onto a scene who wasn't necessarily involved and, you know, like after something bad had happened. Okay. And, the, and, and I also assumed that this character wanted to uh, right the wrongs or, or unveil the injustice. Okay. What about your line? You had a very short one, right? The air is delicate, but what did you make of that particular line? It's something going to happen soon to decide it. Okay. And this character feels how about that situation? Anxious. Anxious. Okay. And then we've just got a couple more here, right? Um, this group up here, can you read me one of your lines? If chance will have me in, why chance will have me without my stir? Okay, great. And you had Macbeth. Okay, so what are some inferences and assumptions that you made about Macbeth, our title character? This of the characters that they came up with that I had very little to do with. So I hope that you guys enjoyed the activity. If you'd please leave the lines on the back. Yeah, Ian, I question? I just ask one question. Yeah. Uh, obviously, knowing the play fairly well, I, I can't, uh, I don't think I can visualize this in terms of, I want to know how much it gives away. You know, in terms of, I'm kind of curious if somebody who hasn't read the play is pretty on target knowing, you know, what what exactly happens. Because looking at the breakdown, I mean, I can't help but look at it and go, well, all the answers are up there. But maybe they can't, maybe you can't see them all. It's so long. I know. I'm just curious more than anything. No. I think that's good. It gives enough to have a concept of when you run into a character what cool. that person's going to be, but I wouldn't look at that and go, I don't have to read the play now. Which I, yeah. yeah, I think about how approachable or unapproachable people think Shakespeare is, and maybe this kind of sets, uh, yeah. sets kind of that, okay, I have a basic idea of, of you know, developing schema maybe for them. Like I have a basic idea of where this play is going, but I don't know all the ins and outs. And so maybe it just it primes the pump in terms of, okay, I know what to be looking for. Well, it makes it so interesting I can discern for some things. So we've got betrayal, we've got blood, we've got, you know, unsexing over here. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually wondering, uh, to some extent, too, if doing the same activity but leaving Macbeth out, like not him being the one person, you, since the play is really centered around him, you got all the elements around him without him. I just kind of wondered if that's enough information to spark the interest, but then since he's the tragic hero and it's really his message, I was kind of curious what people thought who don't know the play. What do you think? I, I don't know the play. Right. Um, probably the most poorly read person in the room, but, but I'm really curious. Yeah. Wanna, so I'd like to copy if you have an extra one. I'd like to <laughs> yeah, read sure, it again. Yeah. I really I want to. Her. <laughs> yeah. I know she's up to no good.